The thing that excites me about what I do is it allows us to close the gap between what surgeons would like to be able to do for their patients and what they can do for their patients. We can bring a lot of different kinds of surgical technologies to bear that allow surgeries to be done through very, very small incisions, allow us to see cancers that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see and get them out completely, be able to navigate to very small lesions in the body and get rid of them without leaving large scars on the body. Dr. Catherine Moore engineers the future of medicine. She develops the Da Vinci, the world-leading robot that repairs people using keyhole surgery or laparoscopy. Catherine was born a Kiwi, grew up in the US, studied robotics at MIT, and landed a job working on solar cars and planes. But as she climbed into management, she missed the creativity of design. Then a friend invited her to watch the trial of a new medical device. The device failed. And afterwards, the conversation was just fascinating. The engineers and the surgeons were talking about the same thing, but they weren't using the same language at all. And they didn't have a common language for communication. And I had done some work in medical devices in graduate school, and I thought to myself, boy, if I want to be able to do something real in this area, I really need to understand the body as a machine, not just the technological side of it. So Catherine threw away her career to go to med school. But by training as a surgeon as well as an engineer, she more or less invented a new profession. She ended up at Intuitive Surgical with a robot that gives surgeons powers that are a bit superhuman. The Da Vinci allows them to operate with minute motions in tiny spaces with no hand tremor. And cameras allow them to see things using wavelengths that are invisible to the human eye. Catherine also began designing simulators to allow surgeons to practice on something other than patients. Then, she came across health workers looking for a way to make sure vaccines sent to children in developing countries got through. She realized her hobby, a tracking game for GPS geeks, was the solution to their problem. My first thought is, well, you need to try geocaching. And I got a lot of blank stares from these folks who had never tried this international treasure hunt game in which there are geocaches all over the world. But more importantly, there's a database that tracks them and all of the locations of these. Catherine is now helping adapt the systems behind the GPS game to save children from disease. And she acts as a link between Silicon Valley and New Zealanders who want to change people's lives, the way she has. And whether that was I interacted with them from an ed educational point of view, or whether they got a less invasive surgery than they would have otherwise, or they saw something that I did and said, oh, I could do that too, let me go and try that. Um, seeing, seeing the results of that, is, that's the best thing.